Good evening. My name is Stephen Hale. I am part of the Graduate Studies Programs at St. Catherine College. This class is CRL 600 Towns and Regions, and my assignment was to find a research topic, and my research topic is the gravitational pull and or bond that not only created Washington County, but has sustained it for the last 221 years. Washington County was actually created in 1792. That was 16 years after Kentucky became a state. The uh, primary cause for its existence that I'll show a slide on momentarily is the Cumberland Gap being discovered uh, by Thomas Walker and others. As they came through the Cumberland Gap, they discovered they needed a route to get back to Louisville, Kentucky, to get to the Ohio River. And that's what established what is called the Big Road. It went to Danville, came right through Springfield to Bardstown, and on to Louisville, also called the Wilderness Trace. So this PowerPoint is an attempt to discover that source or force that created and sustained Springfield and Washington County for the last 221 years. One of the resource books that I was very fortunate to find, I have two of the books with me this evening. One uh, is, of course, Cook and Cook with Baylor and uh, Baylor's writings of 1934 when he did a complete expose of Washington County, but he did it by publishing newspaper articles that he had been writing. The other one is the Washington County, Kentucky Bicentennial, as the cover portrays 1792 to 1992, when individuals in the county and community came together, told their stories, told the histories of their families. So in the beginning of the book, it goes through all the different aspects of life. In the back of the book, it gives the individual histories of their families. These two books I have on display this evening, and they are my reading sources. As I said, the Cumberland Gap discovery in 1750 led to the founding of Springfield, Kentucky. Now, this was a 19, our 1700s map and in the 1700s map, when you come right to this gap right here, you'll notice that there is a, a, a division of the Chaplin River and the Beach River, and then you'll see the word Bardstown right in here. So this wilderness trace actually came across through here. It ended up coming through Danville, through Springfield, and then on up to the Ohio River into Louisville. Elias Davison was one of the first merchants in Springfield, and I actually have that original oil painting hanging in my living room. And I've always been uh, interested in his history and didn't realize there was so much written about Elias Davison in these two resource books that I was using. But before Elias came along, we had a dear lady named Elizabeth Grundy that ran a tavern in Springfield, Kentucky because of all the transport going through the Cumberland Gap coming through Danville on their way to Louisville, and it was noted that 200,000 people came through the Cumberland Gap. So Elizabeth Grundy saw an opportunity, because her husband died, to open a tavern in Springfield, Kentucky. She did it on, on uh, Walton's property. She uh, also cut a deal with Nelson County Sheriff's Office, and she housed prisoners. So this is a painting that I discovered that I thought might depict what her tavern possibly looked at like in the 1700s in downtown Springfield as she was housing prisoners, selling booze, and whatever else she might market. The religious intervention came in right behind her, okay? And first, we had the Presbyterians arriving. After the Presbyterians, we had the Methodists came to the rescue. All of these were mission churches as they were coming from Virginia. And what had happened and why this great exit from Virginia, the soil had been abused so badly, they had ruined it. There was no, nowhere to farm, they needed farm ground. And so what they did was they headed west and they did that by coming through the Cumberland Gap and heading into areas such as we live in. After the Methodists, then came the Baptists. And then followed by the Catholics which were followed later in years, the Pentecostals, the Christians, and the Amish that have moved into the county and created a tremendously broad religious base in Washington County. The Catholic Church impact was one of the studies that I actually was interested in because I was looking for that bond. And in the beginning days, it appeared the taverns were gonna be the bond. But as you well know, a tavern is not a bond for all aspects of life for a long period of time, so therefore it had to be something else to come along. 
The Catholics came to town, started down here on Cartwright Creek with a little church called St. Anne's. Then they continued on and started with St. Rose Church. And they've continued to the point that they actually have five churches in the county that are thriving. They have had four different schools that have thrived here in Washington County. They had the school at St. Rose, the brothers taught Jefferson Davis. We like to brag in Washington County that uh, Washington County is the home of two presidents, Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln. Because it is told that Lincoln's family, of course, lived here, and, and a lot of people believe that he was born here as well. They uh, established two different hospitals and, of course, infirmaries. They have two retirement centers. They have one college here today, but that college actually got its start back in the 1800s. Their membership in the Catholic Church in this county today is almost half of the total population of Washington County. There are 5,226 registered members of Catholics in this county today. The Freemasons came in at a very early stage in this county, so that could have been a bond. They arrived in 1772. They had a stable position here continuously. And I'll be showing you on my maps their stable position as they were located on Main Street, Springfield. They still meet every third Monday night on Main Street in Springfield, Kentucky, where they started. What I have here is an 1886 map of Springfield, Kentucky. And this is another actual company. There were two different surveyors produced these two maps back in, in the early 1880s. And then in 1909, we had a competition as well. You'll notice here the Presbyterians got here early. And this is their church that they built. As we continue around the progression, you'll discover their church kept getting bigger and bigger. But their membership kept getting smaller and smaller. So it's a confusing approach. Uh, right here you'll notice, 1886, here was a Catholic school that was on the actual maps that they had for, for Springfield and Washington County. You can notice on Main Street, right in the next block from the Masons, I'm from the Presbyterian Church, we have where the Masons met. Here again, another picture of the Presbyterian Church. This is actually the map of when they divided Washington County and made Washington and Marion County. As was taught in this class by Mr. Selman, you know, it got to the point you had to be able to ride your horse to the county seat. And so therefore we have 120 counties in the state of Kentucky because of that rule of thumb. And this is one of the maps that they had back at that point in time. Here again, we've got the Christian church. And you'll notice the Presbyterian church has now almost doubled in size. That's from 1886 to 1909. This is a 1909 map and drawing of the uh, St. Catherine of Siena Academy here on the, on the grounds that we're on tonight. In this lower picture, we have the Literary Society of St. Rose and the educational program that they had there. Here again, we have St. Dominic's Church on the 1909 map. As we come around, when you get back to 1925, you'll see the Presbyterian Church has almost tripled in its size. My conclusion of what the binding force was in Washington County, what the bond was, is as it says, my personal research concludes that the Catholic Church is the bond that held this community together. They continue to feed the hungry. They continue to clothe the naked. They continue to care for the widows and the poor. They're continuing to educate the youth, to spread the gospel, and follow Jesus, Jesus Christ's teachings. With all of these activities that we still have going on in the community, we have St. Catherine College, we have St. Catherine Mother House, we have the Sands Prayer, we have everything that's happened throughout the generations. During the cholera epidemic, the nuns were the ones that came in and did the work. And Mr. Sandsbury was the gentleman that buried everybody that died of cholera. It was an, an older black gentleman. And he was able to actually get his freedom because of his activities during the cholera epidemic that we had in Washington County. This is the division map of Washington and Marion County, as I was showing you over there, and how they actually divided the two counties at that point in time. The hatred between Washington and Marion County still exists, <laughs> even though there's Catholics in both counties. <laughs> I'm doing an auction there this coming week, and I've heard a lot of things about you Springfield people coming over here to live in. 
1886, our Main Street, Springfield, Kentucky map, as I was showing you on the walk around there, it showed what was going on as far as uh, there was a Covington Academy in Springfield on Covington Avenue. And at that point in time, their interest was in further education. And education was another factor I thought that could have been the bind, you know, the bond that, that, that bound this community together. But the more I studied, I still was leaning more toward the Catholic Church and all their activities. In 1886, we have another. This was actually produced by a different surveyor. This was the Sanborn map. There again, you've got your Presbyterian Church, you've got Walnut Street, you've got Main Street, you've got High Street, and uh, my house today sits actually right on this corner, but wasn't constructed until 1936. We have, uh, this actually is Main Street Highlight Map, uh, and again, 1886. And, and what it has on it, of course, is a double split. It shows one end of Main Street, they split it down the middle, and then show the other on the same plaque. This is 1909, and uh, we talked about this in class. We thought it was rather interesting that they used the name Coon Street back at that point in time. And that was a derogatory term at that point in time, but it was actually one that was socially acceptable and accepted, so it was actually put on the 1909 map. 1909, again, we've got basically Main and Walnut Streets. Here you see, uh, over Cross Main right here, we've got the courthouse complex that is starting to expand and grow. And of course, they had the jail at that point in time. They had the Presbyterian Church, here it is, doubling in size in that year, and then pops in the Christian Church that still stands on that corner today. The St. Catherine of Siena Academy map, here it is. Their, their academy was right here. This was the St. Rose Literary Society down on the lower side there. This was the Covington Academy up at the top side. And then, of course, they had the Springfield School as well. This was an interesting map. This is the 1909 Water Facilities map. And if you'll notice, these little numbers as they continue along, it shows the elevations because obviously they need to know the elevations so they could run the water lines because, as you know, gravity is a big factor in the movement of not only water, but also sewage. So it's really interesting that we were able to find this 1909 water facilities map for Springfield, Kentucky, which is displayed over there as well. The uh, St. Dominic School is highlighted in, in this particular drawing, showing the, you know, the necessity that the Catholic felt like there was for educating the youth there again. That was run by the nuns. They were the principals, they were the teachers, they actually cooked the food, they did the entire gamut of the local school session. So this is my presentation and my, my conclusion to the tie that binds is that without the Catholic Church, Springfield and Washington County would not be what it is today. Thank you.